everyone, the next gen event is now complete. We've got our 10 master set players, and in this video, we are going to do a tier list for each of the 10 upgradable players that we've got from this event. I need to mention, as always, disregard all of this if you have a favorite player or a favorite team that one of these players play for and pick that player. Always use players from your favorite team, it makes this game 10 times better. But if you want to know the best competitive advantage after using all of the master set players in some capacity, here is my tier list and how I would rank them all in terms of online advantage when playing another person online. Let's get into it. Now I need to mention these rankings are going to be based on getting the players to 87 and then rank based on cost accordingly. We'll begin down in the D tier and that's with the Buffalo Sabres Devin Levi. He's got two skating boosts which is a nice synergy combo that will help be helpful later down the road. Post to post is fine as his x-ray is that attributes are actually quite good. However he's six foot. There's really nothing you can do about that until EA figures out a way to make smaller goaltenders more viable. It's always going to be a net negative and put you at a disadvantage in online play by using a goaltender that's under six foot three. Also in the D tier, we've got Dustin Wolf, a great choice in terms of the master set and the card art's incredible. And he actually comes with an interesting new ability in Showstopper, which I hope to see on future players going forward on some bigger goaltenders. But until they figure out what to do with smaller goaltenders, there really is nothing that you can do. You will just get picked apart upstairs, unfortunately. And that's why these two are in the D tier. On to the C tier, we've got the 87 Shane Wright from the Seattle Kraken with playmaking forward and shooting boost. Playmaking forward is one of the easier ones to activate. There's just a lot of top end players that will more than likely be on a lot of players' teams to get it activated. But even with that, he's six foot 192, which isn't terrible size, but it's not great. Combine that with the fact he's got 89 speed, 89 acceleration and 90 agility if you get playmaking forward activated. His shots in the high 80s, hand stats are pretty good, but then defensively, he's not that great either. He's got 85 face-offs, which is okay, 82 body checking, and then his abilities are among some of the worst in terms of a master set player. Third eye is all but useless in online hockey ultimate team, and big tipper is fun, but you don't need it to actually get tip shots to go in, so... This is a hard pass, and it's why he's in the C tier. All right, on to the B tier. We'll start with the 87, Leo Carlson. Great size, 6'3", 194. Going to be an unbelievable player for the Anaheim Ducks, playmaking forward as well. 89 speed, 89 acceleration, 87 agility. The major issue with this event, and I talked about this in a prior video, is the fact that progression has been slowed down to a crawl, which I don't think is a terrible thing in the end game because the worst thing for Hockey Ultimate Team is when every card is 99 and it just isn't how the game is intended to be played. But when you slow down progression and you have 86s for the first month, 87s for the second month, and so on, the last event of the month is going to feel kind of drawn out unless they are incredible abilities or anything like that because they're going to be very similar to what we got at the start of the month. For example, there is no way, if you are looking for a competitive advantage in this game, that you would choose Leo Carlson over Yarmir Yager's Gallery of Greats card. So that's the example of why I'm, I'm, you know, the downfall of using slower progression is that the back half of the event, the cards have to be put together perfectly. They can't just be, you know, um, everything goes up by 10 or whatever, and then the abilities have to really matter. And in this case, close quarters is effective still, especially close or silver close quarters, but big rig is not. A lot of the player base doesn't even use Protect Puck anymore since the change to Total Control, but even if you did, it's nowhere near as effective as Unstoppable Force, which just is always active no matter what. His skating isn't great. He's got 80 on the draw, so he's a pure winger. He is a lot more defensive with 87 body checking, but his hand stats are worse than Shane Wright. He just either needed to be faster... Or he needed Unstoppable Force instead of Big Rig, and we'd have a bit, a bit different conversation. But because of all that, he's in the B tier. Next in the B tier, we've got the 87 Logan Cooley. One of the coolest cards and players in the NHL, in my opinion. He is going to be awesome to watch as he gets a little bit older. 5'10", 174. So a little bit of an issue there. He is smaller. But because we're still at the start of the game, smaller players are still viable. He's got Silver Wheels, which I talked about this in the ability video I did with Eki. Wheels is a, because it costs so much, you only want to put it on players that have the highest end of skating. So players like Connor McDavid or Kale McCarr or Bobby Orr, they're 94, 95 speed because that's where you're really going to see an advantage. Gold Elite Edges is a great ability at the start of the game and for the first half of it, really. So that is great. He is going to get thrown off the puck awfully easily because he's only got 81 balance and he's 5'10", 174. That said, he is going to be really shifty, and I've used his card while playing squad battles to get objectives done, and you do notice it. It is quite fun to use him. He is listed as a center, but he's only got 77 on the draw, so he's a left-handed winger, and left-handed wing is the most populated among great cards, so that's why he's in the B tier. Next, we've got 
Fantilli. And again, I want to reiterate, the content team did a great job of selecting the next-gen master set cards. They basically used all of the high-end, exciting young players that don't have headshots in-game because they came from the U.S. program, for example. So I do love that the selections here, and I love that it was early on in the year and not in January or later on because we get to, you know, use some of the more exciting young players in the NHL in HUT. That being said, Adam Fantilli is in the B tier at 6'2", 195, okay size, silver unstoppable force is great, and gold close quarters. He is very close to being in that next tier. The one downfall is that it's going to be awfully tough to activate power forward in the current state. So his synergies aren't really going to be able to be activated. Speed boost is very tough as well. I know there are some players that have kind of forced their lineup to get it, and I hate doing that. But he could get 91 speed with that. If he gets 91 speed, in my opinion, I think he's in the A tier. The reason why he's in the B tier is because at 84 on the draws, it's a little low right now, and his skating is under 90, and his accuracy on his shot is only 86. So all of those are why he is in the B tier. Again, you have to consider the cost. I'll be clear, though. I made this card, and I will be upgrading him because he's I've met him in real life. Great kid, awesome player, and one of my favorite young guys to watch in the game. Lastly in the B tier is the 87 Luke Hughes. Offensive defenseman as well as agile dangler boost. He's 6'2", 184 with silver tape to tape and gold elite edges. I think actually as a build, he's pretty good. The, he is a pure offensive card, though. He's only got 80 body checking, but his skating is great at this stage of the game. Hand stats are below 90, and defensively, 84 defensive awareness. Defensemen don't really intercept the pass anyways, especially with the force cross crease meta, but when they do... You need defensive awareness to be higher. That's why he's in the B tier currently. I've seen a lot of players use him with elite edges and use him effectively, but I'd rather just use like Bobby Orr, for example, in that same vein, who's just all around better as an offensive defenseman. So that's why he's in the B tier. Maybe a bit of a surprise, but Bedard for me is in the A tier. His wrist shot power and accuracy at 98 you notice. In Hut Champs, I played him all the way to 87, and he scored a ton of goals for me by shooting far side with that wrist shot and being able to pick the corner upstairs. You notice his shot being 98 overall. Why that's important right now is because players that have shot totals up that high, goaltenders don't have the attributes to be able to stop that regularly. Combine the fact he's got 92 speed and acceleration and silver unstoppable force, he doesn't get knocked off by players that are around six foot or average defensively. But when someone has truculence or is like six, three and above, they do throw him off the puck. You need to just not hold on to it with players like this, by the way. Pass the puck around a lot until they get into a spot where they can shoot. Connor Bedard's wrist shot, you will notice. I promise you that. He's been really fun to use. He's in the A tier. Also in the A tier is the 87 Brock Faber. 6'1", 200 with two-way defenseman, which is one of the easiest to activate with gold stick -em up and silver ice pack. stick -em up in my opinion, is not as effective as it was in prior years. I think that if you're going to use stick -em up it's got to be on a big, big player because their reach is so much longer. He's got good skating at 90 speed, 90 acceleration, 92 agility. He's a perfect replacement for anyone that did not make or doesn't want to make Sergei Zubov. He's a more defensive version of him with 85 body checking as well. All around, a very good option if you are looking for a right-handed defense. But in the S tier, and without a doubt the best card from this event, if you are going to make one for free by doing the objectives, it is David Juracek. 6'4", 199, two-way defenseman. He also gets gold shutdown, which is one of the best abilities in the game on top of that he's got silver heat seeker which did just receive a buff 89 speed 88 acceleration is not great but at 6-4 with gold shutdown it is more than enough patrice bergeron in my opinion is the best right-handed defenseman in the game but if you're gonna lose him for the next team builder let's say you're gonna cash him in david Juracek is a perfect replacement if you pair him with some with someone like bobby Orr that can just burn people down the boards. Great card. He's got 95 defensive awareness with two-way defensemen, and he's got 86 body checking. This is just a better Brock Faber, which is why he is in the S tier, and he would be the card that I would make if you're only going to make one. So I hope this helps make any decisions for you from this event. This has been one of my favorite events, just in terms of the players selected and the card art and everything like that. I think it is important that we use cards that we just enjoy in real life as well, like the players. I will have a line on my No Money Spent team that is Bedard Fantilli and probably Leo Carlson or Cooley whether it's my third or fourth line I don't really care because it's just super fun let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and I'll see you next time have a good one